Hello, I'm Otter. And as you can see behind me, we've been doing a lot of digging since the last time we spoke. I don't know why he decided he needed to jump in the road there. Dude, you're not helping. Anyway, we've now got space for lots of these trees. We could go farther, but we don't really need to. We don't need that much more wood right now. What I've actually been using most of it for is just turning moss into podzol, which I can turn into dirt, and I'm building up dirt because eventually I'm going to build some proper fields in this area. Anyways, over here, we are setting up a dwarven iron farm. We still have more digging to do. So much digging. Seriously. Almost 40,000 deep slate so far in this world. That's a lot of deep slate. I have dug so much. Anyway, there's still more to do. So the plan for today was to continue that digging and set up that iron farm because it's very important that we start getting a good source of iron. This is why that plan has been derailed. One of the odd things about dwarves, and we will freely admit that this is a little odd, we don't understand it. Cats just show up. Wherever you get enough dwarves congregating, you'll find cats, and they just appear out of nowhere. And we love the cats. They are amazing. I am not currently friends with any of the cats, and that clearly needs to change. But the only way to change it is to feed them fish. So we need to go find a lake. Luckily, I found a lake just a little while ago. In addition to the iron farm, I am preparing to expand this area out that way quite a bit because you don't want your dwarves living too near to the iron farm. It's noisy. It's unpleasant. They don't enjoy it. So we want to make sure that we move kind of this direction. Done a lot of exploring all through here and lit up the area. It's not fully lit yet. We found another geode. And in the way down to the storage room that we built last time, there's another geode. So we have three right here. So clearly this was a fantastic place to set up our dwarven keep. I mean, to find three geodes like this so close, it's just making the dwarves so happy. You have no idea. Anyway, the geode is not why we're here. This little lake is why we're here. Fishing inside a cavern isn't nearly as efficient as, you know, fishing out in the rest of the world where you've got you know, sunlight above you and stuff. But I don't really want to be out in the rest of the world where there's sunlight and stuff. I'm a dwarf. I want to stay where it's nice and cozy. So we're just going to have to accept the fact that eh, fishing is going to be a little bit slower. But it will still work. Now, dwarves tend to like to maintain caves as natural as possible. We think that the beauty of the rock kind of speaks for itself. But this space has already been modified. There's been work here in the past and it's just, it's not flowing naturally. And there's lots of signs that this lake, it's kind of filled in with a lot of silt and debris and stuff. You know, we need to restore it. So we're going to do that and then we'll be able to fish and then we'll be able to give those fish to the cats. And then we will have friends who are cats and we will be happy and the cats will be happy. Where did you come from, my dude? That guy is the reason why I still want to make myself some iron golems, so that when I start bringing the dwarves out here, it's, um, it's defended. I don't, don't want my villagers getting eaten. I mean, after all, we do have that religious prohibition against having our faces eaten. I think the first thing I'm going to do is take this pillar out. Oh no, I didn't make a fishing rod. I thought about making it, and then I got distracted by a shiny object. Let's make a fishing rod now. Really? I mean, I know you're enthusiastic about moving to that area of a cavern, but you didn't have to push me out of the road to jump in front of my face and tell me about it. Come on, man. Show some decorum. Yes, you. Now, Part of the reason we need to clear this out and return it to its natural state without all the, the junk that was allowed to flow into it when the previous occupiers of this mine decided to mess with it is fishing works better if the water is deeper. 
But even with one deep, eventually, a fish will bite. Eventually. Okay, I have a very important question for everybody watching the video. I really need you to jump down into the comments and tell me, what is this kitty's name? We've got a friend. Our friend needs a name. I don't have a name tag yet, I don't think, but when we get a name tag, which hopefully won't be too long, we need a name for this kitty. I don't think I showed this in the second episode, but when I finally managed to get Silk Touch on my pickaxe, and the plan was to run out at night and get myself some, some grass because it just, it looks better. And we're going to need it eventually for farm animals. I got Silk Touch, came up the stairs, and standing right here was an Enderman holding a grass block. So I didn't even have to go outside. Let's make sure we harvest the small drip leaves. I'm less concerned about the big drip leaves. I want to harvest them if we can, but, you know, it is what it is. But the small drip leaves are irreplaceable. We've been able to catch a bunch of fish already in this pond after getting it all cleaned up, but I think there's still a little bit of work left to do to finish the restoration and make it look, you know, extra pretty. So we're going to go ahead and do that. When I recorded that last clip, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do to decorate the pond. And as soon as I finished recording, I realized that I didn't actually have any plan at all. I, I don't know why I thought I had a plan. It, it just makes no sense. So I figured I would fish for a while until I figured out what plan would actually work to finish decorating the pond and make it look reasonable. So I fished for a while. I did not come up with a plan. So then I realized that I was going about things wrong. What I really needed to do was use the time-honored ADHD method of dealing with a creative block like that and just pushing through a project, which is to procrastinate by doing something totally different. I ended up doing a few other projects. I dug out a few more pillars. I probably won't bother showing that because I've already shown you digging out a bunch of stuff. And I mean, that's basically what this series would be if I just showed all the digging is nothing but digging. There's been so much more digging. Oh, another like 8,000 deep slate. Not all of it was obviously around this geode, but there was a lot. Now, my theory is that with this geode, when the, the dwarves move into this area, I want this to be a feature, and I haven't decided yet if it would make more sense to leave the geode basically as is. Yeah, you know what? I've made that decision. I'm going to leave this intact. I just need to figure out a way to make the walls not blend into the geode itself because that way it'll stand out. And I need to put safety railings and stuff around because the dwarves are... I love my dwarves. They are just, they're so absent-minded. They, they'll just walk off things and they'll fall to their doom, like, repeatedly. So I need to protect my dwarves from themselves. I already fell in once myself while recording this clip. So, you know, that happens. I also spent a bunch of time digging out this space. And after I dug a fair bit, 
The dwarves and I were talking and we realized that this would make a fantastic great hall. I mean, can't you imagine just multiple levels of dwarven shops and homes and stuff along here? It would look amazing. But that would be too close to where we were thinking of putting the iron farm. So that meant that we had to find a new home for the iron farm. And it makes a lot of sense actually to move it to the spawn chunks because then it's always loaded. So if we go on an adventure, say to a stronghold, you know, the whole time that we're journeying, we're still going to be getting iron. So we've decided that that's probably the best plan. That's what we're going to go with, which just meant digging out a tunnel to spawn. I'm not going to bother showing all the digging, but there were a couple interesting bits along the way. This first clip is when I realized that I had a good opportunity to hop up to the surface for the very first time since day zero and go grab an oak tree so that we will have access to apples. Hello, friend. I am going to count this as being close enough to nightfall. I mean, it's not technically nightfall, but the stars are going to be out any second. So let's get moving. What day is it? It is day 163. And I came up farther away from oak trees than I meant to. All I need is a single sapling, please. I would prefer two, though, just to be paranoid. Ugh. That's ridiculous. Oh yeah, I haven't slept in a while. No thank you, phantoms. Ah! Stop it! I didn't say you could do that. And then the other interesting thing... You know what? I'll just let Past Otter explain it. We've made it all the way to spawn. I think zero zero is like right on this block or something. Anyway, along the way, I have found that at spawn, we have dripstone caves. And this is actually going to be really useful for the pond. I hadn't thought about it and I don't know why because it's obviously going to work really well. So I'm going to harvest a bunch more while I'm here. pretty much brings us back to now. As you can see, I've been using the fish to make friends with more cats. They're all patiently waiting back there for me to catch them more food, but I've also seen more stray cats around the dwarves, and they seem to be really hungry, so I'm gonna focus on getting them fed first, and hopefully make some new friends along the way. The dripstone made a big difference. It's one of those little details that you don't really register when it's there, but it was really obvious that something wasn't right before I mixed it in. Throwing a bunch of drip leaf back in really helped too. Do the cherry trees make a ton of sense in a cavern? No, not really. But they add some much needed color and the particles add a bit of movement and life. And I mean, this is my world. In my world, it does make a ton of sense to have cherry trees down in a cavern. Also, I want to say something here. I started this fishing pond three days before Hermitcraft Season 10 started. I know it looks like they inspired me, but no, I'm pretty sure I inspired them. Yep, a creator with 20 odd subscribers influenced some of the biggest names in Minecraft with a video that hadn't even released yet. That's definitely what happened. That's going to do it for this video. Remember, we still need a name for that first cat we befriended. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and so on. And stay tuned, because I've got some exciting new series coming up in the next few weeks. Until the next time, remember to take care of yourself, and maybe go make friends with a kitty too. They really are quite lovely, even if they are occasionally very pointy and angry. Bye!